If you were born in 1960, probably 1961, and possibly 1962, you are about to be royally, royally screwed when it comes to your Social Security benefits. There's no other way around that. No other way around it. I'm going to prove it to you. Stay tuned throughout the video because I'm going to show you. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, this is probably the fifth time I've had to redo this video because I just, it's so infuriating to me that uh, I'm trying to uh, stay calm. It's hard to. Remember, you did nothing wrong. You paid your taxes. You uh, expected your benefit. You did nothing wrong. You went to work. You dug the ditches. But uh, as I share with you in Andrew Biggs' article about the uh, virus and how it could affect your Social Security benefit, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, we're talking 300 bucks a month at least for, for many, many, many of us. You know, this isn't rich people. These are just regular middle class earners. You can't afford to have 300 bucks a month left off the table because of the shutdown. All right, so we know with the BEA just came out, the Bureau of Economic Analysis said the first quarter GDP was a negative 4.8, which is insanely low, insane, because we started the first two months, according to the Atlanta Fed, we were up by a 3.1% clip, which is insanely high relative to the last, I mean, shoot, since Reagan. So we're growing like freaking gangbusters, then whoop, now down 4.8. Uh, that's the first read. We don't know what's going to come in. Way above or way below, however you want to look at it. Way worse, I guess, than consensus. All right. Now, uh, my man Brian Westbury over at First Trust Portfolios, ftportfolios.com, uh, they're penciling a negative 30%, a negative 30% for Q2. So minus 4.8 Q1, minus 30% for Q2, uh, that's literally unheard of. Since the great, since World War II, the worst we've ever had in any quarter was the first quarter of 1958, when the GDP fell by 10%, falling another Asian flu, by the way. So the first quarter of, two, of 1958 was down by negative 10%. That's the worst by far we've had in any quarter. By far, we haven't come close to that. And here we're talking a 30% GDP decline. Now, the whole year of 2008, the economy grew, uh, dropped by all of 0.4%, not 4%, 0.4%, four-tenths of 1%. And even that had a big impact on people's Social Security, which I'll share with you here in just a second, which I guarantee you did not know. I did not know this. And so if we have a decline like what is uh, a negative 8, we'll just, a negative 5, 4.8 on top of a negative 30, it, it ain't come back anytime soon. There's nothing to do about it. Now, I'd, I'd highly, highly, highly suggest you freaking get on the horn. You start emailing your congressman, your local state legislature, state, sure, your governor, freaking the Trumpster, and say, I cannot afford a 300 to decline drop in my Social Security at 62 to 67 to 70. I can't afford it. And if you're on the lower end of the earnings scale, it won't be $300, but it's going to be more painful because more of your income is relying on Social Security. Dr. Fauci isn't getting a reduction, guaranteed, guaranteed. Uh, freaking uh, Bill Gates doesn't affect him. <sighs> so all these, so what you got to do is you got to tell a the people are freaking panicked. Tell them to go pound sand. You don't want to hear them anymore. I just, I literally don't want to hear these people. I'm done. Done with you. Done with you. You done damage. Too much damage. You have no room to stand on. You're hurting people financially. It's this is it's. I'm done with you. That's all there is to it. And you, my friends, need to do the same because you're being money is being stolen from you. That's all there is to it. This isn't right. You've done what you're supposed to do, and they're taken away from you because of their fear. They're going to say they got the science on their side. They're bullcrap. That's freaking nuts. They do not. They have fear on their side. And they got the media, and the fear and the media combined. It's it, Here we are. Here we are. So let's look at the numbers. So first and foremost, I just want to give you a visualization um, from the BEA. It's actually First Trust uh, Portfolio. That That is how bad it is, right? That's just the first quarter, negative 4.8. That's just the first quarter. It's ugly. So what I want to share with you real quick, I want to go to uh, the indexing earnings from Social Security. I'll put a link in the show notes. And what you do is you go to this, oops, you go to this table. And just real quick, what they do to get your calculate your benefits, they, they compute, a, they use a national average wage indexing series to index your benefit uh, based on your earnings. And they such an indexation ensures that a worker's future benefits reflect the general rise in the standard of living that occurred during your lifetime. So that's what happens, all right? So basically what's going on here, uh, it depends on the year in which you are first eligible to receive benefits. So I was born in 1970, 
The first year I'm eligible to receive benefits is in 2032. If you were born in 1960, the first year you're eligible to receive benefits is in 2022. Once you turn 60, though, they no longer use the average wage indexing series. Instead, they use cost of living from then on. So up until 60, they use the average wage indexing series. After 60, they use cost of living adjustments, inflation, two completely different numbers. So this is why this is critical for you who are born in 1960, most likely 1961, and possibly 1962. If we go through a Great Depression because of insane, regula insane regulations like what they did during the 30s, this will affect me as well. I can guarantee you that because we'll have deflation for as long as the eye can see. That's why they call it depression because we had mass deflation. It was depressing things. We're depressing the GDP. So what we do, I'm going to just show you for me. I was born in 1970, so I'm going to say my first year of eligibility is in 2032. That's when I turned 62 years old, and that's what I want to type in here. It'll say I was born in 1970. It'll give me all these indexing factors. And I just want to point one thing out. So all the factors dropped, 12.5, 11.4, 10.7, and whatnot. So they, they all keep dropping until you get to the year in which uh, you turn 60. And for me, it's 2030. And then again, they go to cost of living adjustment because we don't know what's going to be. So they keep dropping. They drop from 12.55 all the way down to one for me. All right. So let me just give an example of how this works. What they do, and I've got tons of videos on this. And my uh, just go to my playlist of Social Security. You'll see exactly how this works. Or you can buy my book. You can retire on Social Security, and I, I run these numbers for you as well. In 1991, I was a E3 or E4 as an infantryman in the army. I made $11,000 a year that year, or something like that, but not much. So what I do is I take that $11,000 that I made, that was my wage base, and I times by their indexing number, which is 3.73-98426. And that gives me a, a, a wage, an index balance of $41,138. So what they do is they take the, the real dollar you made in that year, they times it by this indexing amount, and it gives you, in this case, we'll just say $41,000. Then they do that for all the years you have income, all the years, all right? And you can see in 2020, if I made 100,000 bucks, we'll times that by 1.466, and you can see how that works. So they take all that, they index them all, and then they look at your top 35 years of indexed earnings, and they add those together. So they add your top 35 years of indexed earnings, and then they divide that number by 420 to give you your average indexed monthly earnings. And from your AIME is how your Social Security benefit is derived. I'll show you here in just a second. So that's how it works. It's actually, when you get it, it's, it's rather relatively simple. I mean, the formula is not, but it's relatively simple to figure it out once you figure it out. Take, it took me a while. It might take you a while, too. No biggie. Just keep going back to it. All right. So what if you were born in, uh, we're going to say, yeah, 2000. Let's see. We're going to say your your first year of eligibility was at 2008. Let's just use that for an example, which means you're born in 1946. Is that the year I want to use? Uh, no, I want to use uh, I want to use 2009. That'd be 1947. All right, here we go. So 2009, your first year of eligibility. Uh, let's see, was, uh, you were born in 1947. Your first year of eligibility was in 2009. All right. So what they use, they say, these are your index numbers, all, you know, pretty cut and dry. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, if we go to, uh, real quick, let's go back to my numbers real fast. I want to point this out. 32 is interesting. You're going to see something here, which is interesting. So from, you'll see it keeps going down 5.9, 5.6, 5.3, 4.8, 4.7. Until we get this odd thing here, it goes from 2.11, 2.01, 1.97, uh, it goes up. Huh, interesting. Why did it go up from 2008 and 2009? Well, that's when we had a dec decline in the GDP for that year, 2008. So the following year went up a little bit. Your index earnings went up a little bit. Don't know why, but it, I mean, it was because it had something to do with the GDP. Hasn't happened at all ever since. It didn't happen before, it didn't happen after. It's just that one year, we had a little bit of a... You know, some ointment, fly in the ointment. All right, so it's interesting, huh? That Because that's going to prove to you why it's a big deal. All right, so you see how that works. So what I've done here on this trusty spreadsheet is I took the indexing amounts for people born in 1948 
So that would mean they're that. So they when they're born in 1948, their first year of eligibility, 1948 plus oops, plus 62 is 2010. So the first year they could take benefits was in 2010, 2011, and 2012. So we got three different people. So the person born in 1948, his first year of eligibility, eligibility was in 2010. But that means he's using 2008 as his last average wage index year, because that's when he turned 60. The guy born in 1959, uh, 1949, his first year of eligibility is 2011, but he's using 2009 average wage indexing series because he was that's when he turned 60, and then 2010. So remember how I just showed you it went up in 2009 from 2008, right? Well, that's going to have a big impact on these guys who have Social Security. Watch. We're going to assume. So he had his, his wage indexing amount. The guy born in 1948 was 1.9657 in, 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 uh, for 1990. The guy born in 1949 has wage index of 1.93. The guy born in 1950 had a wage index of 1.98. Huh. The guy born in 2000, 1.28. Uh, the guy, I'm sorry, the guy born in 1948, his indexing amounts for the year 2000, 1.28, 1.26 for the guy born in 1949, 1.29 for the guy born in 1950. The same thing in 2006. We take their income that they had in 2006. We times it for the guy born in 1948 by 1.069. We times it by the guy born in 1949 by 1.053. The guy born in 1950 by 1.07. So you can see the guy born in 1949, all of his amounts were affected because of this right here. The last year of his average wage index series was 0.98 which affected all of his previous indexing numbers, uh, average wage indexing numbers, which is what Andrew Biggs said in his freaking uh, article. He emailed me about, and I said, I, I, not that I believe him, I said, I'd never heard that, but he, there's proof right freaking there. So let's use the real numbers, shall we? So if you made $20,000 in 1990, $30,000 in 2000, 35,000, we're gonna just use this. So everyone made the same amount of money. The guy born in 1948 in 1990 made 20,000 bucks. The guy born in 1949 made 20,000 bucks in 1990. And the guy born in 1950 made $20,000 in 19, uh, 1990 as well. When we do their indexing amounts, well, we take the 20,000 for the guy born in 1948 times it by 1.96, and he has a 39,314 indexing amount. The guy born in 1949 has a 38,721 indexing amount, 500 bucks less, almost 600. The guy born in 1950 has a uh, 1.98, which we times it by 20,000, 39,637 indexing amount. So this guy right here in 49 has almost a thousand dollars less than the guy from 1950 but uh six hundred dollars less than the guy from 1948 all because of that right there and we can and i say well they all made thirty thousand in 2000 the year 2000 they all made thirty thousand you can see again thirty eight thousand five sixty five for the guy born in 1948 thirty seven thousand nine eighty three for the guy born in 1949 thirty eight thousand eight eighty one for the guy born in 1950 and the same thing 37, 36, 37, 36, 8, 36, 2, 37, 37, 36, 37. Uh, so what we're just doing is I said, well, let's just add all these up, these five years. Uh, yeah, five years. And what happens here is a guy in born in 1948, his indexing amount for these five years is 189,000. The guy born in 1949, his indexing amount is 186,000. The guy born in 1950 uh, has an indexing amount of 100, his indexing total for those five years is 191,000. So what I was doing here for simplicity, I'm saying, okay, let's pretend that this is going to be our average yearly benefit. So I'm just taking the 189,000, the indexing amounts is what we're doing. And we're going to add all these up and we're going to divide by the five years to get a, an idea of what our average income was for the 35 years that we have. So the guy born in 1948 had a 37,827 annual salary indexed. The guy born in 1949 had a by six about $550 less, and the guy born in 1950 had more. 
So we're going to do that. We're going to times it by 35 years. So their average annual index amount was 37,000 or so, or depending on what their year was, 37.8, 37.2, 38.2. And then we're going to times it by 35 because that's literally what we do. We take your index amounts, we add them all together, and we get you a number. In this case, we're using this average indexed amount. We're indexing all together, and we're getting a, an annual uh, income of whatever that number is here, 37,000 times that by 35. So that way we're going to get 1.323 million. So you can see the guy born in 1948, everything else being the same, he had $20,000 more of total indexed earnings. Divide by 420, his AIME is $3,152. The guy born in 1949, his AIME is $3,105. So the guy born in 1949 has an AIME of uh, 40, was that forty-seven dollars less than the guy born in 1948, because of nothing on his own, no taxes, no more income, just because that one year right there. Well, let's keep going. The PIA, the first nine hundred sixty dollars, we times that by 0 0.9, so they're all getting nine hundred, uh, all getting eight hundred sixty-four out of the first nine hundred sixty dollars, eight hundred sixty-four. But the next amount that they have is times by 0.32. And what happens here is a guy born in 1949 has a, uh, a PIA, that's his benefit at his full retirement age, of $16 a month, less than the guy born in 1949, in 1948. Uh, and uh, uh, quite a bit less, well, not quite a bit, $27 less uh, than the guy born in 1950. So on, on any given year, probably no big deal. That's 192 bucks a year, right? But we times that by, uh, by how many years? 25 years, that's $4,800 less that this guy gets. That's not even adjusted for inflation. We take our 192, all right? We're going to use that as our present value. <laughs> this is crazy. We're going to take 192 as our payment. We're starting with nothing. We're going to do that for, what is it, 25 years? uh 25n and we're going to do 2.6% inflation that's an extra $6,816 uh over the course of a 25 year working career at 2.6 so he's uh $6,816 poorer than the guy who was born a year before him but by nothing nothing else is different other than the fact of this one year 2008 and that was a again that was 0.4% it wasn't much 0.4% now, we times that by what we're looking at today. So if you can be $192 a year poorer uh, to a guy born one year previous to you, or uh, we can, I mean, hell, this guy's, we got uh, 27 times, so we're going to do 27 equals 27 times 12, boink. Uh, over the course of that, it's going to be, $8,100 poorer than the guy born in uh, one year after you. So the guy before you, you're $4,800 uh, poorer. The guy after you, you're $8,100 poorer. Adjusted for inflation, the guy before you, you're $6,800 poorer. The guy after you is uh, 324 is our payment. You're 11, uh, oops, 324 payment, 0, 2.6 our inflation, 25 years you are $11,500 uh, poorer. Either way, it's freaking bull crap. It's not fair because you did nothing differently other than you worked. And this is a guy from just nothing but retiring or his first earliest year of eligibility happened to coincide with the 2009 numbers. It's actually 2008, but it came out in 2009. That's it. And that was at a tiny slither of a decline, 0.4%. 20, 30% uh, is projections for Q2. We can't wait 18 months because now if you're born in 1961, you're screwed too. That we can't. And then after that, all these people who hopefully are getting back to business, they're not going to be able to get back to business. They're done. They're done for. You can't just wake up one day and magically freaking wave your hand there, professors, Fauci and Burks. Neil Ferguson, all these freaking fools. You can't just say one day, hey, everybody back to work. It's all good. Anyway, there's the proof. Freaking get pissed off. This ain't right. It's not right. Oh, 
love to hear your comments. Oh, this makes me so mad. All right, we'll see you guys.